Good evening, Mission Control. Tonight I want to do just a general update, kind of where we're at. And last time I talked about insulation, uh, kind of said, here's something we need to talk about. Well, after a whole lot of thinking and a lot of math, decided what we're going to do. So, uh, it's risky. No matter what we do, it's risky. And kind of no matter what we do, there's a problem. So there, this is one of those things where there actually is no right answer. There's just less wrong answers. And I'm learning that there's life's more and more about those than it is about being right. So, insulation. Bottom line up front, the bluff, we're gonna reskin the building. And uh, what that means, see here, is that from that elbow right there, the shoulder is what they're calling it, from the shoulder all the way up to the peak is gonna be clear. This will be white like it is right now, and the north side of the building will remain white just like it is right now. Uh, we're gonna do that because of the cost of lighting. If we don't put that clear section in, uh, which will light the entire building, then our lighting cost just to install all the lights we need is fifteen thousand dollars <gasps> yeah that's the sound of money being sucked away from everybody um that's horrible that's a lot of money but let's say okay that's worth it that's worth it let's do it the cost of running electricity is seven hundred dollars a month and we would have to rewire the building big time we'd have to get a new transformer which is forty five hundred dollars so let's see here, $15,000 to install the lights. Uh, and that's no moving lights. Um, so this is giving everything just the exact amount of light that it needs. And then you'd have another $4,500 rounded up to 5,000. That's $20,000 for lights. That is not gonna work. So we need to take advantage of the big light bulb in the sky, uh, which is what people have been doing for a very long time. Uh, and we need to have that light coming through. now. Some of us, we've talked about, myself included, about just blacking out the entire building all the way inside, uh, blacking it all out with solid insulation, and uh, let's just do that, let's get through it. Well, the $700 a month for electricity is less than the cost of money we would lose by not insulating, or by not having that section insulated, the clear section. If it's not insulated, we lose between $900 and $1,500 a month in heating costs going out that brand new clear section if it's not insulated. And while that's okay for winter time, like, or I'm sorry, that's not okay. Um, while having insulation on the entire building is okay for winter time, because you would still come out ahead um, if you pay the $700 a month for electricity, uh, that's still better than $900 lost uh, because of bad insulation or no insulation. Um, I looked at insulating the back of the uh, clear section in a few different ways. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about what I've decided to do because the solution is that we need to have the clear building to help offset our cost for electricity so that in the summertime we don't have to pay that $700 a month or spring or fall when we have plenty of light. That, that's just a waste of money, uh, business-wise, just a waste of money. So uh, we're going to go with a new building. Uh, or the new cover. I ordered it today. That means they have 10 days to build it and 30 days to ship it, which means we are going to be coming in right at the end of October and having to reskin the building. This is cutting it way too close. So prayers are really appreciated that this stuff shows up earlier uh, so that we can actually get it done. So I'm going to move you inside and we're going to talk about the things that need to be done in there in order to make this all work. Okay, so inside, this is the south facing wall. The heater's right to your left there. What we're gonna do is we actually need to make retractable insulation panels right here. Uh, and I have some designs, I'll show you that on the computer here in just a little bit. But we actually need to have a roller system where this is all insulated and it can be pulled all the way over to the north side. So that during the day, we can hit the button and everything retracts on this side, exposing the clear uh, plastic behind it and allowing all the light in. It's more about the light than it is the heat right now. That's why we're doing this. And then everything moves to the north side. So the north side will be double insulated, be even better um, than just having the single set of insulation. Now, the insulation that we're going to go with 
is going to be uh, R13 is its heating value. Uh, and that means uh, the entire building will only need, I think it's about 45,000 BTU per hour to keep it at 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's going to be pretty awesome. That means our big heater doesn't have to work too hard and we don't use as much propane. So very excited about the insulation. Both ends of the building are going to be insulated. The entire north side of the building is going to be insulated and the south side is going to be insulated up to the shoulder and only this section here will be clear and have the moving insulation. The moving insulation is going to be about 20 feet long by 10 feet wide and we essentially just have to make like a garage door system where we have cross members sitting on a rail and then rolling up and down uh, with a pulley on this side to pull it back and a pulley on that side to pull it over and we're just moving the thing like this. Hey, ho. Oh. Okay, so I'm gonna go inside. I'm gonna show you some actual drawings where you can get probably a better idea of this. Um, but before I go, I wanted to say the most difficult part about the insulation is actually gonna be the ends. So I found a company that does batten insulation, which is what we're getting with the front of it is all gonna be plastic covered. So I'll try to get some pictures of that for you as well. And uh, it's going to be really bright in here on the north side. It'll be even brighter than it is right now. We'll get some reflection off of that uh, insulation. Got the high R value, pretty easy to install, uh, but the ends here are going to actually need a sheet of plastic to go over the doors to seal everything up, then put the insulation up, and we're going to have some custom cutting and stuff like that to do. So let's go inside and check out the actual design of this thing so you can get a better idea. All right, as promised, inside here, giving you a little bit better view, make this a little bit clearer. I'm so excited about this. Sorry, uh, just uh, this is a really big decision, so there's lots of stuff to think of. But let's go over it again. Uh, I showed you outside, but just to make it clear, this area in blue is what is going to be uh, the the clear area, and then everything outside of that will remain will remain white, and the ends will be unchanged. Inside of the building. Uh, this entire area on the south wall is all going to be clear. Very excited about that. Kind of a, a different view of just seeing the structure here. You can see again just the entire south side will all be clear from the top all the way down to that shoulder. And then the north side is all going to get insulated. So everything in red here is going to get R13 insulation on it. That's a really great number. Uh, you know, we could actually start going up higher if we really wanted to, but uh, cost is an issue there. So R13 is a nice balance of cost. Insulation, installation of the insulation, excuse me, will be fairly easy. Uh, that's relatively speaking. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be pretty neat getting that all put in here. Uh, you're going to have blackout insulation all the way along the north wall and the two ends. So uh, that's going to help save a lot of energy because it's it's not going to get as much uh, heat not as much solar energy comes through the north side not until the summertime in the winter it's all dark back here uh, so it has a lot more heat transfer by putting this insulation up here and blacking it all out that's actually going to really help uh, retain quite a bit of heat so then uh, again the blackout insulation uh, will go from the shoulder down and then we have just this, this nice clear area here that is being fabricated from the manufacturer. This is another look uh, kinda trying to describe what we need to do so again if we kept that that clear area there and didn't put any insulation behind it we'd be losing up to 125,000 BTU per hour that's three gallons of propane per hour roughly uh, that would go in to uh, having to keep this thing warm that's hugely expensive uh, when you add it all up so that's between if we don't insulate it versus if we do insulate it that's between nine hundred to fifteen hundred dollars per month depending on how cold it gets outside uh, and remember my numbers run down to negative eight Fahrenheit with 20 Fahrenheit being the average for six months of the year once winter gets here so we definitely need to insulate it so the question becomes how do we do that so uh, we can't really let insulation bunch down here and having insulation hanging from the ceilings doesn't really work because of the 12 foot tall grow lanes. So what that leaves us with um, is a, a section of 
insulation that goes over the top so that everything here would be stored over on the north side. And how are we going to do that? Well, they're going to sell these sections to me in uh, for, for this stuff will be 5 feet wide by 21 feet long and in the middle there will be a tape seam that the two pieces will actually tape together and then we're going to have to secure it to some cross members. Now at 36 inch spacing I think we'll minimize sag and we can use some galvanized uh, conduit with some wheels on the end that have little uh, V indentations on them uh, and we can set all of this on a bar uh, two bars, one on this side, one on this side of the insulation that's actually attached to the galvanized cross members that are in the building, uh, these things here. So this red line right here would actually be a bar that goes all the way across, which would be made of half-inch conduit, uh, galvanized conduit, uh, that we can easily work with and uh, run that up over the top and set this insulation on top of it. So it's like a big garage door is the easiest way to look at it. So here uh, is another picture where in the closed position, so at night or when there's not much solar energy, the insulation will be on the south side. But when it's light outside, we'll actually retract it over to the north side. Remember, this is all inside of the building. Uh, and it will actually hang. Here's a picture of it here. It'll be hanging below the R13 insulation that's already on the north side. So the north side will get a lot more insulation on it. Uh, to help with heat loss during the day when we can open this and then we get the solar energy coming in on the south side. So all in all I think this is absolutely the right thing to do. Uh, this right here is kind of the biggest challenge. Hanging the insulation on the rest of the building isn't going to, it's going to be hard work. It's not going to be a huge technical challenge. But building this garage door retractable insulation is going to be a challenge. Um, what I'm thinking is that there'll be a pulley system, or not a pulley system, but a wench, essentially a small wench on this side and another wench on this side. And they'll, um, this wench will go into neutral when the wench on the south side engages and pulls the system or the uh, insulation to the closed position. And then uh, it'll go taut once it reaches this spot at the top. And then uh, when we want to open it, this winch will engage and this one will go in neutral and pull it over. I could also create a large bar that goes all the way along the, uh, the bottom of the building here um, and have wire wrap around it with a single motor on it. That might be the way to go as well. Uh, so I'm not too certain what to do there yet. I totally welcome your guys' ideas. Uh, that's kind of the last technical challenge I have is I think the uh, roller system on the half inch conduit uh, would work well. The conduit is two dollars per ten foot section that's why I chose that. It's strong, uh, it's easy to work with, I can bend it uh, and it's two bucks a section <laughs> for ten foot sections. So this distance from here to here is roughly twenty feet so that's forty feet of conduit uh, that I need to do uh, eight times, well let's see here, so it's 40, 40, uh, that's 80 uh, times 7, 560, uh, 56. What did I say? 40 times 2 is 80, 80 times 7, yeah, 560 feet. Yeah, 560 feet of uh, conduit. Uh, that I'll need to have uh, in order to make this all work. So all in all, that's not it's not cheap, but uh, once we put this in, it's going to be well worth it. This whole thing still, uh, with reskinning the building, by the way, uh, and doing all this is still cheaper uh, than buying insulation from the other location. And even with all these costs adding up, it will still pay for itself this year. Uh, so this is an investment that is still kind of a no-brainer. It's just hard work. So uh, there are the details. Again, this is the key thing here that we're going to need to build. Uh, I thank you for following along. I look forward to your comments. Uh, I'm, I'm stressed out again, <laughs> being quite honest. Uh, I really had hoped that I wouldn't have to do something like this. I had thought I would be able to find an insulation that would 
be uh, good enough and transparent inside of the building here but when I added up uh, the the quantity of lights uh, fifteen thousand dollars worth of lights it's over 300 lights that have to be installed um, and then the electricity at seven hundred dollars a month just for running the lights um, and then if we black out the entire building which would be the easiest insulation solution um, you're looking at having to pay that seven hundred dollars a month um, all year round and that cuts into the profit and ruins our plans so we can't do that uh, so again I think this is the best solution out of the solutions that are available and uh, certainly it's major lessons learned for HAB2 um, I uh, am definitely humbled uh, through this experience and I think God's telling me a lot of things that I I could have found or I should have found maybe but uh, after five years of looking around I didn't you know, there's just so much out there. It's just, it's kind of hard. So anyway, uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I look forward to your comments. Uh, and uh, please uh, give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. In the meantime, everybody, this is The Real Martian. Out.